Good morning, Kids Connection. I'm Mrs. Michelle with Sacramento First Church of the Nazarene. We learned last time about Saul's amazing conversion to a passionate church leader now named Paul. Today we're going to hear about God's love and acceptance of all people. But first, let's do our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time we have together, Lord Jesus. I so appreciate all of these grown-ups, the grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, and neighbors who are close to these children and make sure that they get this time to be with you, Lord Jesus, that they have this time to hear your word. We pray that you open our hearts and our minds, Lord, so that we can hear God's word, understand God's word, and most importantly, live God's word. We pray for health and happiness with all these families that are having to stay at home longer than usual altogether. We pray that everyone is healthy and doing well and growing in your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I missed last week. I'm so sad. I was not feeling well. Um, I am much better and very happy to be here again. And I missed you guys. I love getting the comments from those of you guys who watch the video regularly. And some of you who are newer, you guys know that you can just email the church. It's on that uh, on our website, First Church, Sacramento First Church of Nazarene. And I also get people who text me and email me saying that they really liked the kids lesson. And I appreciate that. So today we're going to talk about Cornelius. He was an officer in the Roman army. He and his family were not Jewish, but they believed in and served God. Cornelius had a vision. An angel came down to him. The angel said, God hears your prayers and he knows that you help the poor. Send some of your men to Joppa to get Peter. And Cornelius did. Meanwhile, Peter was on the roof praying, and God sent him a vision too. A big sheet, a, looked like a, a giant white sheet, came floating down from heaven, and it was filled with all different kinds of animals. God said, kill something, Peter, eat. Well, they were all different kinds of animals, animals that we don't usually eat. But it's also really important to know that the Jews followed very specific rules about which animals were good or clean and they could eat them and which animals were not good or unclean and couldn't be eaten. Peter was not sure what God meant by this. Peter said, I, I follow your rules, Lord. I can't, I can't eat these animals. God said that Jesus came down. He made everything clean. But Peter knew that we didn't eat every animal on earth. God wasn't telling us to just decide to have a snake for Thanksgiving dinner or make a donkey sandwich. We use donkeys for things all of the time. We use them for transportation, for hauling items from one place to another. Animals have many, many uses to us. They're not just food. So Peter had this vision three times. Now, you know, if God sends you a vision three different times, he really wants you to get that message. And, you know, it's funny because God could have just very plainly said and spoken out his words and said, this is what I mean. But instead, he gave him kind of a picture, like a puzzle to figure out. Well, have you ever heard someone using an idiom or a metaphor before? You know, a metaphor just means we're using other words to kind of create a picture in our head, but we don't exactly mean exactly what we're saying. We're just trying to get you to envision what we mean. For example, when someone sees a really big dog and says, oh my gosh, that dog's a horse. Obviously, they don't mean it's a real horse. They just mean that is a huge dog. Well, God was using this image of all the different kinds of animals to send a message to Peter. Peter thought about it and thought about it, and he finally realized what God was actually saying in this vision. Jesus came down to save everyone's souls and make all of us clean in the eyes of God. God did not send his son to only save the Jews or just a certain part of the world. He sent him to save the entire world. Well, 
When Peter arrived in Joppa, Cornelius' house was full of people, and they were all excited and ready to hear Peter speak. Acts 10.35 says, Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts people from every nation who respects and honors him and does what is right. I love that, that he had to figure out this puzzle that God kept sending him this vision. And he's like, well, he's not just trying to get me to go to a buffet and just eat whatever I want. He's trying to tell me something. And I love that God did this because sometimes when we hear something, you hear it once, you hear it twice, whether it's from your mom, dad, from your teacher, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't really get it. And when you're working on like a hard math problem or something, you figure it out. And when you work on it and maybe someone helps you with the steps, but you figure it out, then you really get it. And you know, I understand that. So that's what God did with Peter. He let him figure this out. And so this huge crowd not only listened to Peter, but they also experienced the Holy Spirit, just like during Pentecost. And they all accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and were baptized. Oh my goodness, there goes Peter again, saving people, people being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So be sure to stay tuned because you guys know, of course, I have a fun little craft in store for you that goes along with this. And it has to do with a little bit of drawing. And I love to doodle. You guys know I love to doodle. And so we're going to do a craft. And right after that, we have attached the cartoon video of this story. And I hope you enjoy. Have a blessed Sunday. And I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, Kids Connection. I am ready to make our craft that goes along with our lesson that talks about the vision that God sent Peter three times. You're just going to need something to color with. I chose colored pencils today, a little scissors, um, some string, and either tape or you can even use glue stick. I've got a little mini stapler here and that's what I decided to use today. So, of course, you know, I love our recycled paper. This is more of my um, little sheet separators that I'm going to use. And let me show you. We are making the sheet that floated down from heaven in Peter's vision. Now, what is this missing? Can you guys tell me? That's right. It's missing a lot of animals and lots of different kinds of animals. So we're going to do that today. Let's get started. I'm just using this pencil to get us going. You guys can do this. This is just a little square of note paper. Let me show you what I did here. I took a little square of note paper and all I did was take the corners and pinch them together. I pinched them together and when I pinched them, I stapled a string in there. I used a dark string so you could see it in our video, but if you've got light blue or white so it looks like it's coming down from heaven and it's right just blending into the sky, you can do that. That's all I did was pinch those four little corners and um, attach the string. And again, you can use tape or glue. I used staples. And so now we're going to take that little sheet that we made and fill it with some animals. So. I've got some scratch paper ready, and I've got my pencil ready, and again, this is easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Kids, you're going to hear adults say, I can't draw. I don't, you know, I don't draw either, but I love to doodle. And so as long as we can see what it is we made, that's all that counts. It's always perfect in God's eyes. So let's start with a cute little mouse. So I'm going to go ahead and help you make a circle. We're going to make it end up looking kind of like a sideways teardrop like this. So you can do a light little circle. And remember, it's okay if you make mistakes. If you go out of the lines, we have an eraser, so we're not worried about it. And then now that we've got our little chunky little circle, we're going to make the ear that's facing the other way here. And we're going to move back just a little bit. And we're going to make this ear that faces us. And we'll put the little tuft of hair on the inside. Now right from this ear, we're going to go ahead and make a point and touch it to the bottom of the circle. And let's make a little dot for our little mousie's nose. And let's make a cute little eyeball for our little mousie. 
Now we know mice have to have something. They have to have that beautiful tail. So I'm gonna go like this and make a big curly tail. And some of you might say, yay, you're finished. And someone might say, um, Mrs. Michelle, this mouse doesn't have legs. So this is easy. You know how to make the numeral two. So we're gonna take and make a big two right here. And that's the hind leg and we'll put little toes on it, on that foot. And then we're gonna make a little two here and another little two here. And you can put some little toes on it. And that is our cutie patootie mouse. And you can finish off his back and his underbelly. You can darken it in a little bit. You can shade it. I love using shading. You can shade your little mouse. I can, I'm gonna shade this, because this is the ear that's facing the other way, so it's the same color as his body. And there's our mouse. And you know it's really difficult to cut out this little animal with the little whiskers and that tail. So easy breezy, lemon squeezy. I like to just go loosely all around. That's how I'm gonna cut out my mouse, okay? And let's get some other animals in here. Let's see. You know what I'd like to do? That's a cute little mouse. Let's do a monkey. So I am going to start with just a circle. Again, super easy shapes. I'm just gonna make a little circle like that. And then we're gonna make a big C here for this ear and a big backward C for this ear. And let's make little tiny C's inside to complete the monkey's ear. I like giving monkeys a little tuft of hair on top. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna make the eyes right in the middle of the ear. If we line them up there, it looks really, really cute. So we're gonna do that. And then I am gonna go ahead and make the nose. And that's gonna start at the bottom of the ear that we made. And it's gonna be a little bit like a tiny triangle, like that. Then I'm gonna take and make a little stick down here and a nice big smile for our monkey. And you might say, that's really cute and it's got monkey ears, but it doesn't look exactly like a monkey. And you're right, we are missing his little shadow, right? So we're gonna start in between the eyes, but up high. We're gonna go ahead and make a big C and then around the smile. And the backwards big C and around the smile, just like that. And now you can see our little monkey face. And I'm gonna do the shading for his hair. And I'm gonna shade the outside of the ears and the outside of this ear. I think that's a cute, cute little monkey. So we've got our monkey. There's lots of other animals we can do. You know what, let's do a piggy. I think that would be really cute to add in here. We're gonna do a piggy. And so here we use a circle. Here we use a circle to start with. This one is gonna be more like a square, but we're just gonna round the edges. So just like, it's super easy, breezy, a lemon squeezy just like a, a kind of a rectangle, looks like a marshmallow, right? And all I did was kind of round off the sides instead of making it square. And to make this little piggy face, kind of in the middle will I make his cute little piggy eyes, like so. And then down here, closer to the bottom, we're gonna make the snout, we're just gonna do a little, same thing, like a rectangle, but with rounded edges, so a little oval. For the snout, we'll do the little dots for the nose, for the nostrils, right? That's our little piggies there. And then I like to come and kind of make a little curve here to show, make the cheeks a little chubbier. I just think that's super cute. And so I like to give our piggies little expressions, put little eyebrows on him. I'm gonna again do a little tuft of hair, a little smaller than I did on the monkey. And now, I know that we're missing something and we are missing ears. And ears are super cute on little piggies because they kind of look like the petal of a flower. They're not just straight, they curve out and in, out and in. So cute. And on this side, I'm gonna do the bottom of the ear, but instead of going and finishing it, I'm gonna make a line and let's do our point down here so it looks like our piggy's ears folded over. That is such a cute little piggy. And if you want to do the full body, it's really easy because you can make straight lines. I know you can. So we're gonna just come down here and I'm just angling them in a little bit. And then we'll come straight here for the legs and we can just draw in the hooves, little ovals make our hooves. And then let's make his little tummy right there. And now for the hind legs, we're just gonna make what looks like kind of a 
look at that just like a little candy cane and then we'll come out and do the little hoof here we'll do the same thing on this side we're just gonna make a little candy cane look a little hoof on that side so we've got our little piggy sitting down that is super cute well I know that you guys get this idea you understand what I'm doing I'll end us with a little tiger here and then you can get creative and make all the animals you'd like so here goes we're just doing a little oval here kind of like a long circle and we're gonna make our cute little eyes and we'll make little stripies on the forehead for this tiger and we'll make some tiger ears we'll make the little tuft inside like this and then we'll make the nose a little fat triangle for the nose and let's curve that out nice and round make a little smile for our tiger and then we can take our tiger stripes and put them here. Let's do three. And we've got our tiger stripes. And you guys can color this in. Let's put some whiskers on here. I like whiskers on my tigers. There we go. And again, there is a cute little animal. You can color in again your, your little stripes on top for your tiger. So there's lots of fun things we can do. You go ahead and fill those animals up. Again, cut it really easily just around the shapes and you guys can fill in the sheet that Jesus cleaned all of us. God sent the message that Jesus cleaned all of us, all of his people. And so I like that craft. I'm dying to see yours. You guys feel free to send me a picture my email is on the website for the church, Sacramento First Church of the Nazarene. I'd love to see it. You guys have a blessed week, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Everybody's welcome. Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army. He lived in a place called Caesarea. He and his family respected God. They weren't Jewish, they were Gentiles. <laughs> Cornelius had a vision. An angel told him, God hears your prayers and knows that you help the poor. Send men to Joppa to bring Peter here. So Cornelius did. In Joppa the next day, Peter was on the roof praying. In a vision, a huge sheet came from heaven. It was filled with animals. A voice said, Kill something, Peter. Eat! <coughs> they were animals that Jews weren't allowed to eat. I can't eat them, Peter replied. If I say they're all right to eat, the voice replied, then they're all right. That's when Cornelius' messengers arrived. So Peter and some others went with them to Caesarea. Cornelius' house was filled with his friends and family, eager to hear Peter speak. God showed me, in a vision, that he accepts people from every nation. God sent Jesus to everyone. He is Lord of all. He healed the sick and freed the oppressed. Mm -hmm. He was crucified and then raised from the dead. Everyone who believes in him will be forgiven of their sins. The Holy Spirit came upon them, just like Pentecost. Peter baptized them. <laughs>